Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at what it takes to set up an Oxygen site on Kinsta. Kinsta is a well-known managed WordPress host, and if you've been around the WordPress space a while, you probably have heard of them. You can see that their pricing starts at about $24 a month for a single site, and in my experience, that's a pretty good range for getting a quality host for your site. If you're doing anything beyond like a one page brochure with no interactivity, you really want something quality. So if your site is mission critical, this is really a good range to be in and should be affordable as long as your site is generating any revenue at all. And as you can see, Kinsta also offers application and database hosting, but we're going to focus on their managed WordPress offering today. So let's jump in. When we first log in to our Kinsta dashboard, this is kind of what we see. I've done a little bit of testing with a WordPress site already, so that's what you see here. We get a good overview of resource usage, bandwidth, unique visits, and CDN usage. But what we really want to see is what it takes to build a WordPress site using Kinsta and kind of what the features are that are available for WordPress sites on this platform. So let's jump over to WordPress sites and let's just add a new one. We'll hit create a new site. There's also a migration option, but we're not going to dive into that today. We have install WordPress. We can choose an empty environment without WordPress, which if you're going to use WordPress anyways, that's just a bunch of extra work you don't need to go through. And then clone an existing environment. Let's choose that and see what our options are. I think it's going to let me choose. Yeah, it lets me choose an existing site on the platform, which is super nice if you have something like a template site or a blueprint that you want to reuse for new builds. Let's go back. We're going to start with a fresh WordPress install here. Hit continue, and we'll call this Kinsta test one. And let's see what kind of data center locations we have. This is really important. Some people come to us and ask about performance, and they'll say, you know, my site's really slow, and I can't figure out why. And sometimes it turns out that their data center is geographically quite disparate from their target audience. So say I'm in Iowa, I'm going to want an Iowa data center. Or if I'm on the West Coast, I might want LA. Now I'm more in the Midwest to East Coast area. So let's see what we have for that. Here's South Carolina. That should be close to me. But again, it's not about where I'm at. It's where my website visitors are primarily from. This can be easy to determine for local businesses. Sometimes if you have a purely online offering, you're going to have to run some analytics to figure out where your users are from most commonly. But it is nice to have a number of choices for our data center location. And it includes a CDN by default and edge caching. So right out of the gate, this should be pretty fast. Let's go ahead and hit continue. We'll just plug in a site title, a username. We'll leave the default password to make sure we copy that. And then we'll just do test at example.com and choose a language here. Let's find English, US. Now we have the option to install a WordPress multi-site, which we're not going to do today, but that is nice if you deal with multi-sites. We have the option to install WooCommerce, Yoast, and Easy Digital Downloads. We don't need any of those for our test today, but it's interesting to see that they have some options for quickly installing commonly used plugins. We'll go ahead and continue, and now our site's being created. While that's going, let's go ahead and look at some of our options on our other environment that we already set up. If we jump into here, one of the first things I always want to check for on a managed WordPress host is backups because backups are so critically important for a website that needs to remain functional. And we have a backups tab right here. This is an environment I've had for a few days and you can see that it is running daily backups, which is really, really nice. We could restore these to the live environment. I assume we have some staging options as well. We'll look at that here in a minute because staging or dev environments are also incredibly handy to have. Looks like we also have an option for hourly backups, but that's an additional add-on. I would say for super critical websites or high-end projects, this is a great option to have enabled. We have the option to run manual backups. There are system generated backups that occur before specific actions. Apparently none of those actions have occurred yet. We have external so we can back up to S3 or Google Cloud, which is super cool. I'm a big fan of as much redundancy as you can afford. So for something super critical like an e-commerce website, I would probably use the daily, hourly, and external backups as well as downloading a backup occasionally. You can never be too safe when it comes to data or website redundancy. 
Now let's go ahead and look at our domain options. It looks like we have a nice convenient temporary domain. I love that. I had a host a long time ago where I had to plug in an IP for my website before I assigned a domain and that was always annoying. So this is really nice. And we can add our custom domain down here. Now let's go look at whether we have some staging options here. This is a set of tools. We have site cache, restart PHP, WordPress debugging, search and replace. That's really handy if you're migrating. New Relic is super nice. I've seen people use this for troubleshooting really kind of difficult problems when it comes to performance. Password protection, force HTTPS. There's a lot of cool stuff here that you can enable. And it looks like they also have a local development option, which is super convenient as well. So let's go to redirects and see what we have here. Just standard redirects if we want to redirect some stuff. Themes and plugins. This is pretty interesting. So this actually shows our installed themes and our installed plugins. I'm not sure what we can do with these. Let's pick uh, Hello Dolly. It doesn't look like we can do with anything with these at the moment, but I assume it probably lets you update from this panel, which is nice if you're managing lots of sites. IP deny, that looks like a kind of a security measure to block IPs, that's handy. Analytics, so this gives us some idea of our plan usage a number of visits, kind of high level stuff, which is handy to have, especially if you don't have like Fathom or Google Analytics implemented yet. We have CDN, which is enabled by default. Using a CDN is a big performance gain most of the time. They can be a little bit of a headache in rare cases, but most of the time you want to have a CDN enabled and it will just magically help your performance. Edge caching, Dynamically generated HTML content of your site is loaded through the edge cache. That's pretty interesting. And I would guess this has an incredible impact on performance as well. An additional page cache specifically for mobile devices. I'm not sure if I would enable that, especially if the site's actively under development. Probably all of this caching stuff should be disabled when you're building your site with Oxygen initially. And then once your build is done and you're just making minor changes, re-enable all this stuff. But that might be a cool option if you have a need for it. Let's look at APM, application performance monitoring. That seems really handy. I haven't used it, so I can't speak to how easy it is to use or how it works, but it looks incredibly handy. Then we have the ability to manage users. This is probably just for access to the hosting panel, user activity and logs. Now, what I really wanna find is our dev and staging environment. So let's see here. It looks like the new environment we set up is ready. So let's jump into that and take a look at creating a staging environment. The way to do that is with this live dropdown up here at the top. Once we've clicked our WordPress environment, we can click create new environment. It doesn't explicitly say it's a staging environment, but I think that's the intended use case here. We have the option to choose a premium environment, which exactly duplicates the resources of the live environment. This is probably unnecessary for most use cases, but if you're doing intensive development and you need to make sure that the live environment's resources are going to work for what you're doing, that would be a good option. For this, we're going to go ahead and choose the free option, which we get one on the plan that I'm testing. So let's go ahead and continue. We'll hit clone an existing environment. Environment name, we'll just call it staging, and then we'll click continue. Now it's creating our environment. We should see it in the drop down here in just a minute. And I like these little notifications that pop up anywhere in the dashboard when something happens with one of your environments. Now you can see staging here in the drop down, so we're going to jump into that. It's still loading, so we'll give it a few minutes and then refresh. And it looks like our staging environment is now done. So we have an exact copy of our live environment. And we can make changes here safely without affecting our live environment, which is just a must have if you're dealing with production sites. And once we've made some changes, we also have the option to push to live. Let's go back to our live environment here. And now we're just going to go ahead and jump in and build a quick landing page in Oxygen to see how everything performs. This is the front end. So obviously I clicked the wrong link. Let's click the WordPress admin link. And let's see, Elijah Mills. And then hopefully I still have that password on my clipboard. Let's see if I'm lucky. And it is my lucky day. So now we just need to go ahead and install Oxygen. So we'll go to add new, click upload plugin, choose file, drop in Oxygen 4.6.2 and go ahead and install that now. And activate. Let's go ahead and click blank install because we'll build a quick landing page out of our design library. Let's go ahead to pages. And we'll just use our sample page in this case. 
and we'll edit that with oxygen. And even though I have pretty slow internet where I'm at, that loaded very, very quickly, so that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and go to Add Library, Design Sets, and let's grab maybe something from Hyperion, and we'll just insert this entire page. Looks pretty good. Now let's save that, and then let's go ahead and jump up to the front end to see how everything looks. That looks pretty good. Everything is as expected. Now the real test is a page speed insights test. So we haven't done anything on this site to enhance performance. We're just using all the defaults from Kinsta. And we do have a page with a few images and assets being loaded and things like that. So this should be a good test. Let's go ahead and drop in our URL here and analyze that. And that's a pretty impressive mobile score out of the gate. We have a 90 on performance, 92 on accessibility, which doesn't have anything to do with Kinsta or the hosting best practices and SEO. Obviously, we haven't optimized anything for SEO, so those scores aren't bad at all. And I expect the scores are probably a bit better on desktop. Yep, the performance is at a 99 on desktop. So this is a good sign that with Kinsta, you're not going to have to fight with the hosting environment to achieve really good performance. Now, you'll still obviously need to make sure that you use best practices, don't upload 5,000 pixel wide images and things like that. But it looks like the baseline stuff is going to be covered for you with their performance features. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this. I like the interface. I like the features that are available. And I think the price is perfectly reasonable for a really quality host, which is what you want if your site matters. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And that's a quick look at setting up an Oxygen site on Kinsta. Thanks for watching.